All right, here we go. Welcome to the electronics class for September the 10th. Before I start off, are there any questions? Not seeing any, not hearing any. Okay, uh, let's talk about last night's homework then. Most of you have turned in the homework, but a few of you have not. Guys, you really need to turn in the homework. I only allow two late assignments per term. Uh, some of you have used up one of your late pass already, passes already. And uh, in fact, some of you may have now used up both of your late passes. So I, once you've used up your late passes, I don't give credit for any more late homework. All right, let's uh, talk about last night's quiz. All right, so here is uh, something that should look very, very similar to what you saw. The questions should be the same. The sc on screen may be a little different. Okay, question is, which of the circuits shown below is a simple series circuit? All right, one very common misconception that people quite often have is uh, they think that a simple series circuit is only allowed to have one resistor. That is in fact not the case. You can have multiple resistors in there and it still is a simple series, simple series circuit. Okay, so the answer to quest, question number one is that all of these are simple series circuits. All right, I see a question in the chat box. Ah, okay. All right, a student has asked me privately um, what I'm going to do about the fact that they didn't have power for the last two days. Uh, okay, so if that was the case, don't worry. Let me make a note of the fact that you didn't have power. And so I will let you turn in the homework without a late penalty. Obviously, I, I have to be considered there. And somebody else just joined here. So let me make sure that I mark them as tardy. Okay. Uh, let's move on. <clears throat> Uh, okay, question number two here. We've got three resistors connected in series with a 12, 12 volt battery. We want to know how much circuit, how much uh, current is going to flow. So let's uh, start by just drawing a picture of it. I always, I highly recommend you always start with drawing a picture. All right, so here is the battery. And I've got three resistors. Okay. And remember the long side is the plus, the short side is the minus. For right now, it doesn't really matter, but later, later that will become important. All right, and it's a 12 volt battery and we've got 13 ohms, we got 28 ohms and we got 21 ohms. We want to know how much current is gonna flow through the circuit. All right, uh, how about if I let one of you guys do this? Um, anybody want to volunteer? How are you gonna solve this problem? Nobody wants to be brave. How about Caden? Let me pick on you. How would you recommend we approach this problem? Um, so you would want to, um, if you wanted to find the current, you would add all the um, resistors together to get the okay. total value. Okay, so it sounds like Caden is suggesting our total is equal to R1 plus R2 plus R3 which is true if it's a series circuit. Now, very soon, we're gonna start talking about parallel circuits. This equation does not apply in that case, but, but for, for what we've got right here, it does. Okay, mm -hmm. so what did you get when you added them all together there, Kaden? Um, let me see, I don't have it open right now. Okay, but... I'll tell you what, I've got it here. Yeah. So I get 62 ohms. Okay, now that we know the total resistance, what do you recommend we do next? Well, you take um, the equation V equals IR, you solve for I. All right, I guess so, be... so V equals IR, solve for I. So how do mm -hmm. we do that? Divide by R. Yeah. So now we got I equals V over R. Yeah, and then you would, um, you would have the voltage, which is 12, divided by the resistance, which is 62, and then that should be your answer in All right. amps. So I do 12 divided by 62, and I see 
nine, three, five, and a whole bunch of other digits. All right. So now let's scroll down and let's see if that's one of our options. I don't see that. Ex I don't see that as an option there, Caden. I mean, it's like um, it. That's like a, an amp. So it would be like um, a 193 or 194 milliamps. Aha. Uh -huh. okay, there is so one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Caden is saying that this answer is in amps. Because whenever we use Ohm's law, we don't want to work in milliamps or kilovolts or whatever. It has to be regular amps, regular volts, regular ohms. All right, so it sounds like he's suggesting that if we were to convert this into milliamps, we move this over one, two, three. So 193.5 milliamps. And so then which answer is the right answer? Probably 190 milliamps. Why do you say probably? Why don't you say definitely? Because it's, I mean, it's not exactly the same, but if you were to um, like round it, it would be 190. And why do we have to round it? Why is rounding so important? Mm, I don't know. All right, so this has to do with what we talked last time about significant figures, right? Mm -hmm. If we look at this number on our calculator, well, the number I wrote on the screen has four significant figures, but actually on my cal calculator, I've got like about nine there. Okay, so I need to ask myself, how many significant figures are we allowed? So I, what I have to do is I have to look up here at the problem statement and I say, when they gave us the problem here, how many, uh, how many significant figures were they? Well, well, I see, I see 12, so that's two sig figs. 13 has two sig figs, 28 is two sig figs, 21 is two sigs. So all of the input numbers only have two significant figures. That means my, my answer can only have two significant figures, right? I am not allowed to have more than two, more significant figures in my answer than were in the problem statement, right? So 190 is definitely the right answer. And 193 would be the wrong answer because it has too many sig figs. Now, if you guys, if you do a homework assignment or a test and you write 193, when you should have written 190, I will probably be a little bit lenient with you. But when you take my physics class or when you take Mr. Miller's chemistry class, you're going to find that if you write it down with too many significant figures, we're going to mark it wrong. So you might as well get in the habit of doing it the correct way now. All right. So now we need to know what will the voltage drop be across the 28 ohm resistor. All right. Well, we already figured out what the current was. We said that the current was 0.19. And now I'm going to write those extra sig figs. I'm going to write a couple extra figs. And now some of you say, wait, Mr. Hendricks, you just got through saying that, you, that the correct answer can't have that many sig figs in it. Well, right now, the number that I'm working with is an intermediate number. And so you don't want to round off until you get to the very end. So 193 uh, would, was the final answer for question number two. Uh, and so we rounded off to 190. But now in question number three, this is no longer the final answer. This is an intermediate answer. So this is the current. And the problem tells us that the resistance was 28 ohms. So I want to know what the voltage drop is. So how about... Uh, um, Alessandro, would you be willing to tell us how are we going to figure out if, if we got a resistor and it's got this much current flowing through it and the resistor has that many ohms, how could we calculate what the voltage drop is across it? Uh, you multiply the... I, I don't really understand, sorry. Okay. Well, remember the equation called Ohm's law? Can you tell me, now Ohm's law comes in various forms. Can you tell me any one of the forms of Ohm's law? That's the, that's the equation that has I and V and R. Uh, it's the triangles one, right? The triangle one. Yeah, I remember, but I can't really remember anything specific from that. Okay, you guys need to memorize these. All right, so, one form is V equals IR, 
of e equals r i. It doesn't matter. You can put them in any order. Another form, the form that I like is i equals v over r. And then the last form is r equals v over i. All you have to do is memorize any one of these. This is the one I like. And you can always derive the other ones just using algebra. All right, so we're looking for voltage. And so this one right here is clearly the one we want. So if we just take this number and plug it in for I, take this number, plug it in for R. So I get 0.1935 times 28. My answer here is 5.418. Okay. And so I look to see which answer does that match with? 5.4. Yeah, because remember, we're not allowed that many sig figs. So if we round that off to only two sig figs, we'd round down to 5.4. We wouldn't round up to 5.5. That wouldn't make sense because this number is closer to 5.4 than it is to 5.5. So there's our answer, 5.4 volts. Okay. I'm hoping this is making a lot of sense for you now. Um, when I look at the scores from last night's homework, I can see that some of you are still struggling with this. Uh, make sure that uh, you spend a little time on this. You need to get this. All right, question number four. We've got two resistors connected in series with a nine volt battery. Okay, so if we, if we have them in series, that means here's our battery. Here's the one resistor. Here's the other resistor. Okay, it's a 9.1 volt battery. And we know what the current is that's flowing through the circuit. And we know that one of the resistors is 45. So this one here is 45 ohms. This is the one that we don't know. But this time we do know what the current is. We know that the current that's flowing through this resistor, which I've done in a different color there, is 75 milliamps. All right, so Henry, would you be willing to unmute yourself and recommend a way to solve this problem? Oh, I had trouble with this one. <laughs> well, good, and you're exactly the one I want doing it. If you knew how to do it, then hey, where's the fun in that? Yeah, I guess. All right, um, so. Yeah. Want a hint? Um. Or, or you want to just give it yes. a Yes, okay. I guess you say. Okay. Do we know the voltage? Yeah. Okay. Do we know the current that's, that's passing through the entire circuit? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So then you can use the equation to okay. Ohm's law, right? Ohm's law, okay. Yeah, right. and then you use... So which form of Ohm's law do you like to remember? Uh... The one you like to remember, the like I equals uh, the, yeah, the good one. All right. I like that one. So, so we know what I is, we know what B is, so we're looking for R. Okay, so I want you to rearrange the equation there. I need R all by itself. How are you going to do that? You should probably swap the I and the R. <laughs> okay, very good. Swap the R, the I and the R. Now, for those of you who aren't quite as good at, uh, at algebra, at doing algebra in your head as Henry is, so you're probably going to do this step by step. So you're going to multiply both sides by R. Okay. And so now R is up on top, but it's got this I connected to it. So we're going to divide both sides by I, okay? which, uh, which then has the effect of doing exactly what Henry just said. What we did was we swapped the R and, and the I. So now we have R equals V over I. Now, when I put in I, do I put in 75, Henry? Um, yeah, wait, 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 no, you've got to change the milliamps to uh, normal amps. Yeah. Okay. You, yeah. When you're using, you almost Ohm's caught law. me at that. <laughs> yes. Okay. But I'm, I'm glad that I'm glad you caught it at the last second. I was worried when you're using Ohm's law, you cannot work with milliamps. You have to work with regular amps. Okay. So if we've got 0.75 milliamps, if I move it over one, two, three, so that means uh, the number I'm going to put in here is 0, 0.0. Oh, uh, let's see. Wait a minute. I moved it. I moved it too many there. I got too many zeros. One, two, three. So, I'm, so 0 0.075 is the number I put in for I. 
9.1 goes in for V. Henry, do you have your calculator handy? Yes. Okay. Um, Tell me what you did. And by the way, everybody should bring your calculator to class every day. We're going to be using this calculator a lot, pretty much every single day. Got an answer yet, Henry? No, my calculator almost had a battery, so it took a second to start. <laughs> I, I've got it for you. So on 12 my is 12.1. 12. 12. Wait, maybe I... I'm get, I think you maybe you left out the zero. I'm getting 121 as my answer. Oh, yeah. I probably left out the zero then. My cake, yeah. That's fine. All Don't right. worry about it. Okay, so the answer is 121. What are the units? This is, this is resistance, so this is ohms. Now, now, is that our answer? No. Why not? Um, isn't that just both of the resistors added up? So you, need this okay. you got it exactly right here. My, my drawing's getting pretty cluttered here. So what we just calculated was the total resistance, 121. Okay, that's both of the resistors put together. Okay, that's not what the question's asking. The question's asking what's the value of the other resistor. Okay, so if one of them here is 45 and we know the total is 121, then what must the value of this other guy be? What's 121 minus 45? Okay, so I'm thinking it's 76. Somebody yeah. second that motion? All right. And hey, what do you know? There's the answer right there, 76. Now, some of you might be thinking to yourself, holy cow, is this an electronics class or a math class? The answer to that is yes, it is both. You cannot do electronics without doing math. Okay, so uh, you, if you are a little bit uncomfortable with math, well, when you finish this class, I'm thinking you're gonna be very comfortable with math. All right, last question now. We need to use the table method, right? So I trust that you guys got out the textbook and you looked up the table method and you saw that there here is the table that they refer to let me make it a little bit bigger here on my screen a little easier to work with this is the table that we refer to so tristan would you like to walk us through how to use the, the table method here or let me rephrase that question even though i know you would not want to walk us through it would you be willing to do it anyway Earth calling Tristan. Come in, Tristan. We were, yeah, Chris, Tristan, you're showing as being online. Can you please unmute yourself? Or if you don't have a microphone, just type into the, type into the chat box. Okay, Tristan, I'm a little bit concerned that you're not responding. Uh, okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna have to have a private talk, you and me afterwards. How about uh, Dallas, would you be willing to unmute yourself and tell us how to rec how would we do this? Um, you just, you just put, you just put those um, numbers into the table. Okay, so we put the numbers into the table. All right, so let's see what numbers have we got here. We've got 100, 100. ohms. So let's yeah. put that in for one of them here. Okay, so one of them here is 100. Oops, I guess it'd help if I turn on annotation. Let me move this up a little bit before I do that. Okay, so we got 100. Okay, what's one of the other ones? 300. 350. Okay, one of them is 300 and the other one's 50. Okay. So 100, 350, all right? And what else do we need to know? What, the else, are we, what else are we given in the problem here? Voltage. The voltage, which is nine, okay? All right, so let's write that in. And we write it, because that's the total voltage. 
right? So the numbers you see in green are the given numbers. Now, well, the rest of them are numbers that we need to figure out, all right? So, Dallas, how would you, how would you suggest we proceed? Well, I didn't hear you there. Well, what would you recommend we do next there, Dallas? Check the voltage and amperage at, at 100 ohms if you're using the voltage if you're using the simulator thing, and then well, check it at 300 and then so, check it at 50. So if you're, if you're saying we can do this column yet, we actually can't do this column because we don't know the voltage across it. We don't know the current. So we can't do the 100 ohm yet. We're gonna have to do something else first. Somebody else wanna suggest what we do? Uh, you Add up all the individual resistors into ah, the total. Into okay. <laughs> That sounds good. We can add up all the resistors. So 100 versus 300 is 400, not another 50. Okay, so the total resistance is 450 ohms. Now I'm thinking we can do something because now we've got two of the values and so we can use Ohm's law to calculate the third value. So if I equals V over R, V is nine and R is 450, okay? So nine divided by 450. So I'm seeing 0 0.02 amps, right? Somebody suggest what do we do now? Uh, you could write the amps as the same across each uh, resistor. Aha, uh -huh. very good. Now, why can we do that? because it's a series circuit. This is really important that you guys understand that. If you have a series circuit, what that means is you only have one branch, okay? You may have a bunch of resistors. Who knows how many resistors you have, it doesn't matter. If you only have one branch, then the current is the same everywhere. And so we can do exactly what you just said. So. We can just go ahead and write in. If the current is 0 0.02 anywhere in the circuit, then it's 0 0.02 everywhere in the circuit. All right, so now, Lily, can you please tell us what you would recommend to do next? Uh, I don't know. All right. Uh, how about Presley? Would you, would you, what would you recommend we do? Um, I would say to, to try and reverse the voltage drop from resistor three from, um, so it would go up from nine. Okay. So I, if I hear you right, I think what you're saying is that now that we, we know what the current and the uh, resistance are, uh, for this column, we can use Ohm's law to figure out what the, re what, or, yeah, did I say, yeah, the current and resistance, now that we know that, now that means we can figure out the voltage, yeah. right? So, so just use Ohm's law, is, that's what I'm hearing you say. I hope that's yeah. what you meant to say. That is what I meant to say. Okay, so let's take Ohm's law, and uh, so I equals V over R is not the form that's going to help us. How about let's multiply both sides by R. So we get V equals RI. Okay, so if we just put that number in for R, put that number for I, that will tell us what V is. So I'm thinking 50 times 0.02. So I'm seeing the, volt, the, the voltage drop across this one, that resistor there is gonna be one volt. All right now I want everybody else to uh, get out your calculators and figure out what is the voltage drop across R1 and R2. I'm gonna sit here and wait for one minute while you guys get out your calculators. Your job is to figure out what is the voltage drop across R1 and what is the voltage drop across R2. I'll give you guys a minute to, to do that. So Tristan, I see you're responding now. Um, what happened a few minutes ago, Tristan? I was trying to talk to you and you weren't responding. Did you step away from your computer for a while? 
Sorry, I was going and grabbing a snack real quick. Ah, okay. Because I uh, I called on you in class and you weren't there. Not cool. Oh, sorry. Okay. All right. So I see a lot of people are putting answers in here. All right. Um, so Simon, you're saying two and six. Uh, looks like everybody else is agreeing. So Simon, which one is two and which one is six? Um, the first one's two, second one's six. Okay, does that make sense? Because 100, uh, let's see, let me turn on the annotation again. All right, so 100 times 0 0.02. Yeah, I'm thinking we don't even need a calculator for that one. Okay, so that one is definitely gonna be two volts. And then the other one, okay, maybe we need a calculator for. So yeah, we could use Ohm's law, but hey, guess what? There's another way that we could calculate uh, what the voltage is across R2. We don't need to use Ohm's law. Anybody suggest a way that we can figure out what, what the voltage is in this box without using Ohm's law? We can subtract uh, R1, the voltage of R1 and R3 from the total. Yeah, exactly. We know that these voltages here have to add up to be equal to the total. So that means if we take nine minus one minus two, so I'm thinking that's gonna give us six. So if we do it that way, we get six. And if we use Ohm's law, we get six. So that's reassuring. If we didn't get the same answer both ways, that would mean something went seriously wrong. That would mean that mathematics is broken. And if math is broken, then we can all go home. Oh, wait a minute. We're already home. Does that mean the math is broken? Hmm. Interesting question. Or maybe not. Okay. Well, I think that we are done with the quiz. All right. So what you guys should have done is you should have uploaded a file that uh, showed that you did exactly what I just did. So, so in, in your file, I want to see this table all filled in. All right. So most of you turned in the homework, a few of you didn't. If you didn't turn in the homework because you didn't have any power, then that's understandable. So if that's the case, send me an email message letting me know that, and I won't mark it as being late. Um, but if you had power, then you really should have done it. Okay, so I am thinking that we are good on the homework here, uh, but if, uh, if anybody has any questions, I'll take them now. Not hearing any questions, not seeing any questions. All right, well, let's jump into tonight's homework. So let's go back to the uh, main page here, go to electronics, go down to the bottom. Okay, you'll see that we're now in module two. All right, simple series circuits, we just did that one. All right, tonight is simple voltage dividers. So tonight, we are going to make our first circuit that actually does something useful. Well, and some of you might say, but before we lit up light bulbs, is, isn't that useful? Well, okay, all right, maybe maybe you, I'll give you that one. Okay, but other, other than that, okay, we are now going to make a circuit that actually performs some function that is an important function that we, we need. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take a voltage divider. All right, so the idea with the voltage divider is let's say that you've got some device that you wanna charge, like say maybe your phone, you wanna charge your phone and you know from reading the manual that it requires five volts. But you're, you're in the car and the, the car battery is 12 volts uh, and now, Ideally, you have your, uh, your charger with you, and the charger is a special device that takes that 12 volts and converts it down to 5 volts, because if we were to just take our phone and just hook it directly up to 12 volts, we would have just burned out a very expensive phone. You cannot go overloading a, power, a, a device like that with too much voltage. That'll destroy it. So we need to take the 12 volts from your car and somehow step it down to five volts so we can charge our phone without destroying it. Now, if you have your, your charger, your phone charger, then it's got special circuitry built in that does that. How does it do that? What would we do if we didn't have 
the special charger and we had to make our own. Well, what we would have to do is we would have to build a device that's called a voltage divider. All right, now, if you go into Canvas, you'll see that I have a link right here that will take you to the, uh, the, the textbook. Um, so if you click on that link, it'll take you to this part of the textbook right here called Voltage Divider Circuits. Now, some of you are going to say, whoa, wait a minute, Mr. Hendricks, that's chapter six. We're not ready for chapter six. Well, we're doing things in a little bit different order. We, we are, in fact, ready for voltage dividers. The, the way the book does things and the way I like to do things, they're a little bit different. So don't worry about that. Okay. So in the book here, they talk about voltage dividers. Um, I could go through and read the book to you, but where's the fun in that? I mean, you guys, you can read the book for yourself, right? Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain voltage dividers the way that I like to explain it. And my way of doing things is a little different than the way the book does it. And it's good to see two different ways of doing it. So let's go through my explanation. And if you're happy with my explanation, great. If you're a little bit iffy uh, after I finish my explanation, go back and read the book and you'll find that they describe things a little bit differently. And maybe you'll like their way of describing things better than mine. So here's my way of doing it. I'm going to take the uh, online circuit simulator, which we've been using a lot lately. And uh, I'm going to just kind of experiment with it and see what happens. Okay, so if I turn on the values here, you'll see I have a battery here that has 100 volts, way too much voltage for, for most household electronics. If I build a circuit like what you see here, okay, a circuit that has two resistors, connected up in series, okay? Series is what we've been talking about a little while now. So a series connection means that all of the current that goes through one goes through the other. So if I have a current coming out of the battery, whatever current goes through the top resistor, that same current goes through the bottom resistor, comes back here. So everywhere in the circuit, everything sees the same current. That's what we call a series connection. All right, so I've got two resistors connected up in series. And so then if I take a wire and I, I, I uh, connect it to the junction here and pull it out, and then right here, take another wire and pull it out. If I take my voltmeter and connect it up to these two wires, what you'll find is that the voltage here is substantially less than the voltage I started with. What I've done is I've created a circuit that reduces the voltage. Um, we, they call it dividing the voltage. If it had been me, I would have called this a voltage, voltage reducer rather than a voltage divider. But hey, they didn't ask me when they were thinking up the name. So OK, we're stuck with it. All right, so it's a very, very useful circuit. And it's also a very simple circuit that hopefully you guys can understand. All right, so let's see if we can calculate why it is that the voltage is 40.66, right? So this is going to be very much like we did with our homework last night. Let's take a look at this. So we've got a 54 ohm resistor. I think it's 54. I can't, it's a little bit hard for me to, to read that. Let me get this thing out of the way. Let me click on it. Okay, there. Yep, that's a 54. Okay, good. So we got a 54 ohm resistor and we got a 37 ohm resistor. Okay. All right. So then, what is our total? Okay. Well, if they're connected up in series, that's just going to be R1 plus R2. All right. So what is what is uh, 54 plus 37? Okay. All right, so I'm getting 91. All right, that's the total resistance. Okay, now if the voltage here is 100, could we then calculate what is the current that's flowing through this circuit? 
Well, I hope you guys agree the answer is yes. So I want everybody to take a minute and I want you to do it. I want you to calculate how much current is flowing through this resistor or through this circuit. If the total resistance is 91 and the total voltage is 100, how much current is flowing? Not seeing any answers yet, guys. Okay, all right, now good. Uh, let's, let's use a couple extra sig figs. So, um, because you'll notice this number is given with three sig figs, this number is given with three, this gives number, number is given with four. So I want at least three sig figs in your answer. So don't just round it off to one, okay? And so I see Presley's giving me with four, which is, I actually like that better. My final answer can only have three sig figs, but if my intermediate answers have a little bit more, that's probably a good thing, okay? All right, so I'm starting to see a lot of answers and they're a little bit different, which is quite surprising. Why, why are some people saying 1.1 and some people are saying 1.2? When I put this in my calculator, I, my calculator is telling me 1.0989 and a bunch of other digits, okay? So I'm thinking if I round this off to two, uh, to uh, three sig figs, that rounds off to 1.10, because this nine rounds that up to nine, and then that rounds up to 10. So 1.10, that's the answer I got. So those of you that got 1.20, I'm not quite sure what you were thinking there. All right. So our total current here is 1.10. All right, what can we do with that now that we know that? Well, let me just make a quick note of it so I don't forget. So the current that's flowing through here is 1.10 amps. Well, now we know that that current is, this, is the current that's flowing through all the resistors. That current is flowing through this resistor. That current is also flowing through this resistor. So if we know the current that's flowing through that resistor and we know how many ohms that resistor is, we can then use Ohm's law to calculate what is the voltage drop across just that one resistor. So V equals IR. Now, one thing that I like to do that some students find helpful if I'm just talking about the voltage drop just across this one resistor, not the total voltage in the circuit, just the voltage across that one resistor, I'm going to put a, a little triangle in front of the V, which is called delta. And that just reminds me that this is not the total voltage we're talking about. It's just the voltage across this one resistor. It's just the pressure drop across that one resistor. Okay, so we know what I is. We know what R is. Let's calculate it out and see. So I'm going to take that I that I just got, I'm going to multiply it by 37, and what I get is that delta V is 40.6593 dot 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 dot. So if I were to round this off to four sig figs, which is what they've done in here, you can see the, that this, the nine causes this to round up, not down. So 40.66, that's what they got. Now, realistically, we've only got three sig figs in this number. So what we really should do is we really should round that off. We should write our answer as 40.7. So shame on the people who did the, uh, the simulation here. Uh, but you know, that happens a lot. The, the calculators give you more significant figures than they really should. This meter right here kind of does the same thing. Okay, so good, it matches. So the voltage drop across this resistor right here is the one that we care about because that's where we got these wires coming out. So if we have some device that needs uh, around 40 or 41 volts in order to work properly, we can take that device and we can plug one end of it into here, we can plug the other end of it into here, and then it will have 40.7 volts. Now, just in case you guys watch this recording uh, a couple weeks from now, I need to tell you something 
that I'm not going to require you to know now, but later I am going to require. If we connect a device up to this voltage divider, if that device pulls any current, then that's going to change everything. Because this, all of this was based on the assumption that the current was the same everywhere. But as soon as we connect up another device here, we've just changed the game. What we do is we've made it so some of the current is coming down here, but then it splits and it go, and some of it goes this way and some of it goes that way. So what, by connecting up a device that actually uses up any current, we have changed it. So this is no longer a simple series circuit. Okay. And so everything that we just did, all the math that we just did needs to be modified if the device that we connect up here pulls current. Okay. But that's an advanced topic that I don't want to go into right now. So what we're going to do for today is we're going to assume that whatever we hook up here, it has no current draw. Okay. So we're going to connect up something and it's going to, it's going to feel the voltage and, but it's not actually going to pull any current out of here. And so as long as we make that simplifying assumption, then everything that we've done here is right. Now, later on, like maybe about next week, we are going to learn how to deal with the case where it does draw some current. Okay. Everybody see how this works? Now, let me ask you a question. What if instead of taking my current, my voltage meter and connecting it up the way I've done here, what if I were to, to connect it up so that, so the one end is connected up here and the other end is connected up here. So basically what I want to know is what is delta V across this resistor. Hopefully you guys can know the answer to that without even doing uh, Ohm's law. How could I find out what is the voltage across this upper resistor without using Ohm's law? Do we know the voltage across the lower resistor? Yes. Do we know the total voltage? Yes. Yeah, exactly, Caden. Just subtract it. So whatever 100 minus 40.66 is, that will tell us how much voltage we have across the top. Okay? So 100 minus that. So I'm getting 59.34 volts is what I get. Okay. So 59.34 volts here, 40.66 volts here. Okay. And they add up to 100. Okay. Now, what if I wanted to use Ohm's law to calculate the voltage drop here? Could I do that? You guys agree that Ohm's law says V equals IR and Ohm's law should apply anywhere? Do we know how much current is flowing through this resistor? Didn't we agree that it's 1.099 uh, uh, and a bunch, or we just called it 1.10. That I'm, I'm good enough with that. So if that's the current that's if that's the current that's flowing through here, and we know what the resistance is. And I'm thinking we'd use Ohm's law. So let's take that number, stick it in there for I. Take 54, stick it in for R. And if you don't get 59.34, that means math is broke. All right, so give me thumbs up or thumbs down or type into the chat box saying, saying either yes or no, whether or not you got this. If this makes sense to you, say yes. If you're a little bit iffy about it at all, say, you know, say you're iffy. All right, it looks like everybody's saying this makes sense. Okay. Um, okay, we've got one honest student. Thank you for being honest there. Uh, is there any question that I could uh, answer that would help you understand it better? Or how about this? If you're a little embarrassed to ask questions right now because you know that we're recording this video, 
at the end of the video or at the end of the class session, I will turn off the recording and then you and I can talk one on one live and I'll see if I can help. Oh, okay, you're saying you got it. Okay. All right. Well, if you understand that, then you pretty well understand how voltage dividers work. So let's let's play around with this voltage divider that we got right here. Let's see. Um, let's see what happens if we change some of these values. All right. Let's uh, let's click on let's click on this this resistor right here. If I increase the resistance, what do you think that's going to do to the voltage across it? So somebody uh, somebody type in. Let me type into the chat box and tell me. So if I increase the resistance here, is the voltage on my meter going to go up or is it going to go down? So let's take a vote. I want you guys to either type the word up or down into the chat box. If I increase the resistance of this resistor right here, okay, so, so we got somebody saying that it's going to go down. How about the rest of you? Okay, lots of people are saying it's going to go down. Could you repeat the question one more time? Okay, so the question is, if I increase this resistance right here, okay, then what will happen to the voltage? Will the voltage go up or the voltage go down if I increase the resistance? So almost everybody is saying the voltage is going to go down. We got one brave person who's saying that it's going to go up. Well, let's find out. Okay, so we got we got a, a little bit over 40 volts now. I increase the resistance. Hey, look at that. The voltage is going up. Isn't that interesting? Okay, so this online circuit simulator theory, I think is a wonderful, wonderful tool to, uh, to play with and to learn. So in your homework tonight, one of your assignments is to create a voltage divider. And so remember, this is this. So what you see here is what you need. Okay. So remember, the way that a voltage divider works is you take your battery, which has more voltage than you want, you create one circuit so that all of the current has to flow through that one circuit. So in that case, we're saying that this is a series circuit. So we got one resistor here, one resistor here. And some, and in between those two resistors, we're going to pull out a wire. And then at the bottom of the lower resistor, we're going to pull out a wire. And we're going to measure the voltage between those two guys. And this voltage here will always be less than that voltage. And the value, it depends on the values of these resistors. So, it, so the, the more resistance we put here, the more voltage we're going to get on, a, on our thing here. So a good way to think of it is, uh, you know, let's take it to the extremes here. Let's, uh, let's just play with our, cir our circuit uh, simulator here. Let's take this resistor here and let's take it all the way up to one uh, to 100 ohms. And let's take this resistor here and let's take it all the way down to one ohm or at least close to it. Okay. In fact, let, let's make it. So we got one ohm here and we got a hundred ohms here. Okay. So look at that. When, when this thing, oops. Uh, okay. Okay. When this guy is almost all, so when he has most of the resistance, that means he has most of the voltage across him. This guy right here, he's only got a, a small uh, part of the resistance. And he's only got a small, small part of the voltage across him. Okay. All right. Now, when you read the book, which I trust you will do before, before you do the homework, you're going to find that they have a different way of explaining this. They give you a formula where they say that the ratio of E uh, output divided by E total 
is equal to the ratio of the R that that is, I'm going to call this R output because it's the resistor that uh, we're using that we're we're we're, uh, we're putting our probes on either side of divided by R total. The, the book, they're going to give you this formula and they're going to explain where the formula comes from. And I don't think it's a good idea for me to read the book to you. So I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to explain it. I'm going to let you read it for yourself. Uh, I personally don't like just saying, here's a magic formula, use this formula and it'll work. And people say, well, okay, I don't know where the formula came from, but I'll use the magic formula. I like to understand why things work the way that they do. So the way that I explain things is the way that I recommend that you approach it. Just sit down and use Ohm's law, okay? So if we know the total resistance, then we can use the current, we, we can use the voltage to find the current. We know that I is equal to V total divided by R total. And then once we know I, then we know that that I is the current that's flowing through here. And so we can use Ohm's law to find out what that voltage is. But we also know that that same current is flowing through here. So again, we can use Ohm's law to find out what this voltage is. So I don't give you formulas and say, here's a magic formula, memorize it and you'll be good. I want you to step your way through logically step by step. All right, well, I think that you guys are now ready to do tonight's homework. Uh, we still have a half an hour left. Uh, remember, if I end the meeting right now, that doesn't mean the class is over. You still have a half hour, so you should be using the next half hour to do the homework. Um, and now I suspect that some of you might have a little bit of trouble with this homework. Looking at your scores from last night's homework, I can tell that most of you've got this pretty good, but a few of you are still a little bit iffy. So here's what I'm going to do. In about one minute from now, I'm going to turn off the recording and I'm going to say, if you want to leave, you can type by into the chat box and you can go. Um, I am going to stay online so that any of you who are having a little bit of trouble, you can uh, you can just come on and, and we can we can work together to uh, to do the problem together. Okay, so even though I'm going to end the uh, recording, I'm going to stay online. Okay, so here goes. I'm going to end the recording right now.